the story came to me after my fourth title. I was a young, feral, lightweight, feet swift like a ballerina on an ember stage. A hook so packed it crept into the crisp air of my first December on the legendary Mickey Mouse gym. The match after my title, Marky Speedy Gonzalez hit me with his last powerful left and I walked out with a bad bloody eye and the bruised ego of a defeated champion. That was the first of many more to come. My eyeballs never rolled back into place and seeing where the next cross was going to hit me from became more and more difficult. When I went back to Mo's gym, I needed all the training and help I could get. I wasn't ready for the fight I just entered. This new, unknown kid already had an established ether of quick and brutal fighting, ready to take over. And on a blink of my new lazy eye, my hurt ego played the fool and agreed on entering the match of the year that I could never win. I was greeted by a silence so grim it would make a stiff cringe. It was then that Johnny Maximo told me the story of the curse on the boys. The curse of Gemini. I know the name Gemini. We all did. Mickey more than any of us, we all knew it. He was there on Marcelo Gemini's legendary last fight. Everyone knew well the image of their last fight, two young tigers in their prime. Mo versus Gemini, Victor versus Victor. Both tall, wide-eyed, short dark hair and the same quick step on their feet. They even had the same slightly bented arch in their stride off the ring. The newspaper ran it for weeks as the upcoming match of the century. It was the match of the century. Went on for the magical number of 63 minutes and ended when one thunder jab from Mauf left Gemini KO. Gemini hit the floor only to get up on his team's arms as Mauf lifted the champion's title. The boys took him to the back, bloodied and bruised and helpless like a goat in a tornado. The news hit the rounds not even five minutes later. Mauf's final punch left Gemini blind. Marcelo Gemini's career was over, the legend finished there. The man died a few years later, neck broken with his own rope, feet dangling from the ceiling next to his old boxing bag. Consumed by the pain and fire left within, the world assumed. The world didn't know any better, Johnny said. The rumors, Johnny told me that morning, were that the pain, shame and anger drove good old Gemini mad. He spent his last days torn between his own shadow of unfulfilled glory and the certainty that he was the champion Mickey Mouth himself, that he won the fight and all the others that followed. Marcelo Gemini would go through entire days without answering by any other name but Mickey. He would talk of Mickey's fights as his own and sometimes even lament Gemini's faith as if not his own. The world didn't know that on his final days Gemini lived in a bitter confinement, damning the fate that cut his career so short, damning the dark that enclosed him. Above all, damning himself and Mickey Mouth, the man responsible for it all. Gemini wanted payback for them both for such a sour destiny. He got his peace and his revenge in the end with his own death, but he left a curse behind. A curse on Mickey Mouth's life. That any champion on Mickey's name would suffer the same fate of blindness, splitting his name into two champions just like he did. The darkness doesn't scare me. Everyone feared the curse in the gym, but despite their best efforts and fears, no champion had risen from Mouth's training yet. Until I came along, I was Mickey's champ and my weak eyes had already stolen my glory. I could feel the darkness creeping in. Who was this unknown fighter? Did I have Gemini within?